Hello and welcome. This is Mike Evans, author of Achieve with Accountability, Ignite Engagement, Ownership, Perseverance, Alignment, and Change. Over the years, we've had the opportunity to work with organizations around the globe in a variety of different areas. Today, we want to share some insights and some key principles that exist in what we call our brand you. You are CEO of your career, life, and destiny body of work. We say that we are currently in a brawl with no roles. Things have changed dramatically in corporate America over the last 10, 15, 20 years. In fact, we would suggest we are in a new world of work. And our old buddy Charles Darwin coined it best when he said, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. This applies to organizations and also today our focus on individuals. Individuals that are able to embrace change, to adapt to change, that are resilient, that grow and innovate, will be those that will continue to thrive and excel in what we like to call the new world of work. It used to be the big eight, the small. Now it's the fast that eat the slow. Those that are nimble, agile, embrace change, can adapt to change, innovate and grow, are those that will continue to excel and thrive in the new world of work. Listen very closely. If you take a quick listen, do you hear that swooshing sound? We would say that is the giant sucking sound of slack being extracted from the economy. Let me elaborate. We would suggest that there are seven forces that have coalesced and combined to create what we like to refer to as the seven-sided pincer movement. And this pincer movement is gunning to replace you at your job to displace your department and to reinvent the way your business is done. Consider how many jobs were completely abolished and no longer necessary because they can be done more effectively by ERP and SAP, by software. Hundreds of thousands of jobs over the last 10, 15, 20 years no longer needed. White collar robots, cash machines, lights out warehousing and more. No longer are these positions necessary because they can be done more effectively via technology. Globalization. No longer does it matter where you are, there's an abundance of talented professionals available and they're only a click away. Outsourcing. Often better, faster, and cheaper, and usually the experts in what they do. How many organizations have outsourced their HR department or outsourced their IT department or payroll? The internet. Bye-bye brick and mortar. We all get that. We would suggest travel is needed, travel agencies are not. Retail is needed, but stores are not. Banking is needed, banks are not. And that applies in a variety of different industries. Disruptive and destructive competition. We don't know what's next on the drawing board and what's going to come out and look to displace us, our department, or our organization. Artificial intelligence. Who would have ever thought that doctors and surgeons could be replaced, but there's AI out there right now actually performing surgery. And other disruptors that are out there, well, we don't know what we don't know at this point. Dr. Ray Kurzweil, who was heading up Google's AI department, had this to say not long ago. Medical robots will go inside our brain and connect our neocortex to the smart cloud by the year 2029. It's 11 years from now. Basically, what Ray is saying is that if we choose to, we will all be able to know everything there is to know about everything. Think about what it will be like to compete in a world where everybody knows everything there is to know about everything. And you may dismiss the statement or just think it's hooey, but Ray's been accurate over 90% of the time over the last few decades. All we're suggesting is that if we don't consistently adapt, embrace change, grow, innovate, and become distinctive in whatever we do, we're in very real jeopardy of being on the outside looking in. What will it take to differentiate and become distinctive in a society where there is a surplus of similar companies employing similar people with similar educational backgrounds, coming up with similar ideas, producing similar things with similar prices and similar quality. We are actually competing in a sea of sameness right now. Think about the last time you drove down the highway and how simple was it for you to differentiate a Kia from a Bentley. We need to really focus on what it will take to become distinct or we're in jeopardy of becoming extinct. 
Clinging to the status quo and being complacent is simply not an option. Let's consider a few quick corporate examples where complacency killed. Blockbuster was a highly regarded firm, top performing organization. We used to get in our cars, drive to a Blockbuster, take 10, 15, 20 minutes to search for a video, drive home, watch the video, and either return it that day or the next day. Blockbuster didn't see the trend of the future where companies like Netflix put them out of business. Another highly regarded company, Kodak, top performing organization. We used to actually, if you remember these days, go to a drugstore somewhere where we would buy a roll of film that would allow us to take 20 or 30 pictures. And after we take all 30 pictures, we would then drive to a photo mat or somewhere to get the film developed and then would finally be able to see the pictures that we took. Think about the change in that industry where the digital revolution exists and we can now have several thousand pictures on our smartphones and we pay for none of them. Kodak didn't see the trend toward the digital revolution. Nokia used to be the world's leader, the foremost leader in cell phones. They're on the verge of distinction. They didn't see the trend toward the smartphone. The six key areas that led to their downfall can lead to your downfall as an individual. These organizations, for the most part, had too much of a short-term focus, much more of an inward focus and not enough external focus on looking for possibilities and opportunities, as well as hazards and challenges. They were very complacent and they would cling to the status quo. And there was too much of an emphasis on managing the business versus leading the business. They were also quite reactive and very much averse to risk. These are six key areas that as individuals, we all need to really be aware of and be cognizant of. We need to all, no matter what your title is or what your job description, we all need to view ourselves as leaders because you are, in fact, the leader of your life, your career, and your destiny. Nobody's going to do that for you. And it's vitally important to understand that all of us, no matter what you do, what your role is within whatever organization you're part of, that we are all being watched and thoroughly scrutinized at all times. Everything that we do, everything that we say is being evaluated and scrutinized. From the shrug of your shoulder to the blink of your eye, we're being watched. And everything we do and the experiences we create for others around us is developing your own personal brand. We would say all of us have a default brand. It's just simply the way that other people see you. It's the way other folks view you. It's their perspective of you. What's the brand that comes to their mind when they think about you? With that understanding, just consider these questions. Are you completely, absolutely certain how your employees view you, if you're a supervisor, manager, or leader? Are you completely absolutely positive how your colleagues view you within your organization. What about your boss, your manager, your supervisor? Are you certain how that person sees you? What about your external and internal customers? How do they view you? And finally, how do your friends and family truly view you? The only way we could possibly know how to answer these questions for certain is we need to be asking, we need to get feedback, we need to communicate effectively, and there's a lot of other elements that come into play. If you're not doing that, you would have what we call a biased reality. You may see yourself one way, but others see you completely different. A single perspective, we would say, is the enemy of reality. If we're only seeing the world through our own lens, we're setting ourselves up to fail. If we're not getting feedback and having open and candid conversations and seeking perspectives of others, it limits our ability to be highly effective. So when it comes to developing our brand, there are some key elements that we need to be aware of. Distinction, excellence, the emotional signature. In other words, how do you make people feel? How do those people feel around you when you create experiences for them? Trustworthiness and consistency take deep dives into these when we do work with clients in, in our workshops. We'll touch on them very briefly as we move through this overview. Just remember that as an individual, as a brand, whatever brand you portray right now, we are all depreciating assets and we've got to constantly invest in developing ourselves and becoming more effective and making sure that we are demonstrating that we bring value to the organizations that employ us. 
Why would you be chosen over somebody else? What are you doing to constantly build your skill set to develop new competencies and be seen as somebody who is truly a vital asset to your organization? Keep in mind that every result that you achieve in your lifetime, personally and professionally, is a byproduct of every action you choose to take. Just think about that for it. It sounds simple, but let's build upon this premise. Every result, wherever you stand as of today in your personal life and in your professional role, is a direct result of every action you have chosen to take in your lifetime. So why do we take the actions that we choose to take? we would suggest it is because of the beliefs we all individually hold that drives the actions we as individuals choose to take those actions produce our subsequent results personally and professionally and why do we as individuals we are all unique individuals hold the beliefs that we hold well it's because of the experiences we have all had in our lifetime personal and professional experiences that develop for you your core unique set of beliefs that you will take action off of that will produce whatever results you're achieving professionally and personally. It's a pretty simple flow there. And what's really critical to consider is to keep in mind that every action you take is an experience for everybody watching you or that is around you and observing you. And even more importantly, it is either reinforcing the belief they already have about you or you're developing a new belief that that person or that group of people will have about you. And the key consideration that you need to be aware of is, are the experiences you are creating for others around you, your friends, your family, your colleagues, your clients, your boss, are those experiences you're creating for all of those people instilling beliefs in them that will help you achieve the results that you want to achieve in your life, personally and professionally? And with the heightened awareness of the experiences you're creating for others around you, you have much more command over developing the brand that you want for yourself and the way that you want others to see you. What you do speaks so loud that I cannot hear what you say. In other words, words are cheap. People will tolerate what you say. Ultimately, they will act on what they see you do. And what they see you do is developing your brand. And you need to keep in mind these three important questions. How do you truly show up in the eyes of others? Your friends, your family, your colleagues, your boss, your customers. How do you behave? What are your actions suggesting to those around you? And what do you accept? Your choices to these three questions develop your brand, just the way others see you. And highly accountable people want to know what's in the heads of those around them. They want to know how they are seen by other people because you cannot shift the way you are seen, the way you are viewed, or your brand if you don't know how people see you or view you. And by the way, the beliefs others hold for us, when somebody gives you feedback, it is simply the beliefs they have about you. And they primarily hold those beliefs for three reasons. They either had a direct interaction or experience with you, which formed a belief, they may have observed you, which formed a belief, or maybe they heard stories about you or your team or your organization, which created a belief they will hold about you. And as I've said, when people give you feedback, it's simply what they believe. So it does us no good to filter feedback through, there's a variety of different reasons or areas where people might filter feedback listed on the screen, or to get defensive around feedback because it's simply what somebody thinks about you and you're the one that made them think what they think. The more effective thing to do is to simply consider that question. Is it a belief you want those folks to have about you or that other person or that other group to have about you? And if you don't, if you want to shift the way you're perceived, if you want to change your brand, then you need to create new experiences for those around you. You can take complete ownership and accountability to make sure you're creating the appropriate experiences for those around you, including your colleagues, your leader, your boss, your supervisor, your friends, your family, anybody that you are interacting with, you can control and make certain that you're creating appropriate experiences that foster the beliefs you want others to hold about you and will continue to define your brand and help you achieve what matters most in your personal life as well as in your professional career. Highly accountable people will never blame anybody else 
for the way that they're perceived or their brand. They will take complete ownership and accountability and they'll create the appropriate experiences to help them achieve the brand recognition that they want to have. They'll expect nothing from anybody else. They're very proactive and they will do something. They'll take action. They don't wait for things to happen to them. As we observe highly accountable people and highly accountable organizations, we've seen four distinct best practices that consistently rise to the top. First of all, they recognize the totality of their realities. They're very good at making sure that they continually have great communication with those around them to understand what they're dealing with, what the opportunities and possibilities are, as well as hazards and potential challenges and roadblocks. No matter where they're at or what their circumstances are, even if somebody caused them to be in a tough situation, they will always completely accept ownership for whatever situation they're in and ultimately find a solution or create a solution or a path forward that will allow them to achieve what's important to them personally and professionally. And finally, they consistently follow through on those commitments. They'll exercise action. They are very proactive and dedicated and resolute when it comes to achieving what matters to them. By the way, that has a lot to do with reinforcing their desired brand or the way that they hope to be perceived. Folks that take on those best practices of recognizing realities, accepting ownership, creating solutions, and implementing their plan to achieve what matters most, build a brand that most of us want to see and those that we interact with. So when it comes to developing our brand and the way that we want to be seen in the eyes of those around us, let's consider this control continuum very quickly. A couple key points and then we'll move on. But on the left-hand side of this control continuum, on the left where it says no control, and on the right, all the way to the far right, where we have complete and total control. Other On the left-hand side, let's consider that side now. Other than the laws of physics and Mother Nature, there's really only one thing that we have absolutely no control over, and that's the choices other people make. We can attempt to influence others, but ultimately we have absolutely no control over the actual final choices others make. And on the right-hand side of this continuum, the only thing we have complete and total absolute control over are the choices we make. And that's really critical to understand when it comes to developing your brand and how you want others to see you. You have complete and total control over the choices you make when it comes to how you choose to role model within your organization or in your personal life. You have complete and total control over how you tend to go about building capability in those around you. And you have complete and total control over the choices you make when it comes to energizing and inspiring and motivating others around you. Building your brand is something that you have complete and total control over. Remember that nobody can prevent you from choosing to be exceptional at whatever you do. Another key consideration is that are you producing in the workplace work truly worth paying for or mediocre successes? Think about that for a moment and then consider the seven-sided pincer movement. Are you potentially in jeopardy at being replaced or displaced by one of those seven forces? Those of us that are producing work worth paying for and we're seen that way based upon the brand that we build for ourselves and the brand that we develop over time will continue to thrive and excel in the new world of work. And it really does start with being really good at something. And it's unequivocally about the work, not your job title. Consider the last three, six months within your workplace and the experiences that you've created. Have those experiences demonstrated an overt benefit that you bring to your organization? Or are there alternatives that would be better options? What's the dramatic difference your experiences have demonstrated within your organization? And is there a reason to believe that you're the best option versus any other alternative that exists? We call this the moment of truth. We want you to really think about over the last three, six months, even a year back, would you pay for the work that you delivered? And just consider some very simple factors. What's the wow factor, beauty and elegance of the work, no matter what you do, the impact it had on helping the organization achieve what matters most, and do you have raving fans? 
These are all a result of the experiences that we will choose to create for those around us, our colleagues, our boss, our friends, our family, our clients. We have complete total control over that. Remember, leadership is a choice. It's not about your title. It's not about who reports to you. It's not about how big your office is. We're all leaders of our lives, of our careers, and of our destiny. And we are all being watched at every given moment. From the blink of your eye to the shrug of your shoulder, we're all being watched. And the actions we choose to take are sending signals to those around us and forming beliefs those folks will have, whether they're folks you work with, folks in your personal life, clients of yours. Just remember, everything you do is developing your brand. We believe there's 14 key areas that need to be considered as we go about looking to survive and excel in this new world of work. We call it the New Work Survival Kit. And those are the 14 key elements. We're not going to get into them here. We simply don't have the time. But we all need to take accountability and ownership for the brand that we develop over time and the way that we're seen in the eyes of those around us. We started this overview by talking about and pointing out the seven-sided pincer movement, those seven forces that have coalesced and combined to gun for your job, to look to displace your department, and look to reinvent the way your business is done. When you think about what the defense is or what's the kryptonite to help us against that seven-sided pincer movement, we believe it's rather simple. It just takes a lot of accountability, ownership, and a lot of self-awareness. First is developing ideas. Don't be complacent. Don't cling to the status quo. Constantly look to reinvent. Do it with speed. Tap into the talent that exists in all of us individually as well as at every level of your organization. How do we take advantage of that talent? And then how do we make sure that we are distinctive? What are we doing to stand out in what we refer to as the sea of sameness? And how do we all, no matter what your job title is, no matter what you do, how do we all demonstrate exemplary leadership practices so that we achieve what matters most to us personally and professionally? I really appreciate the opportunity to have shared some of this information with those of you listening. If you have questions or would like to learn more, feel free to reach out. We'd be more than happy to send you additional information, white papers and topic papers that provide more meat and data around some of these key concepts and would certainly appreciate the opportunity to chat with you further and learn more about your current areas of focus and how we might be able to help you achieve what matters most within your organization. I wish you all the best of luck. Live and lead. A